Hi everyone, I'm Themis Melisaris from Princeton University and I'm going to present PURPLE, how to improve the speed and effectiveness of memory consistency testing. An ongoing trend is that we are reaching the end of Moore's law and single processor performance improvements have been slowing down since the early 2000s. Our response as an architecture community was to leverage concurrency and parallelism and that is why multi-core processors and GPUs have become more prevalent giving us performance and energy efficiency. But as a downside, reasoning about and ensuring correctness has become more challenging. This becomes even more apparent in the presence of bugs such as the ARM read after read hazard and flaws in the read file memory model. Compiler modifications were required in the first case and specification in the second. A lot of work has been done previously in empirical consistency testing using litmus tests. And our work builds upon that. We present a testing approach using a variant of litmus test without per iteration synchronization called perpetual litmus test. We remove synchronization for it to be faster, but the key opportunity here is that perpetual litmus tests allow for interesting thread in the leavings to appear, leading to increased outcome variety more efficiently. Prior work removed synchronization but did not account for the interesting interleavings. We provide a software suite capable of generating, running, and analyzing such tests from regular litmus tests, which we call the perpetual litmus engine. We present an algorithm for detecting outcomes of interest in perpetual litmus tests, and we also present a linear heuristic that allows Purple to scale to millions of test iterations while maintaining a rate of outcome discovery that is orders of magnitude higher than existing approaches. I will first go through related work and then we'll go over the logic behind perpetual litmus test. I will also present how to analyze a perpetual test log for outcomes of interest and will then present the evaluation and conclude. There has been a lot of work around consistency models, starting with Lampard's seminal sequential consistency paper and leading up to the specification of models like total store order and more recent memory models like Armor Power. A lot of work has been done in using empirical tools to test hardware implementation from random testing using tools like TSO tool and McVersey to litmus test based tools like litmus. Many papers like PipeCheck also rely on litmus tests to verify the microarchitecture hardware of such implementations. Purple builds on litmus test based empirical testing methodologies to provide improved performance and efficiency. Litmus tests are small parallel tests consisting of a few threads and a few memory operations per thread that stress a set of particular thread interleavings. Each thread or each thread ordering corresponds to a litmus test outcome. The purpose of litmus test is to test if certain memory operation orderings are observable or unobservable in hardware. Different interleavings are possible under different consistency models. For example, if you have these two threads with a store and a load each, these six different ordering of operations are allowed under sequential consistency. The order of operation is from top to bottom. Now, if we look at the total store order, which is a wicked consistency model, we will see that it allows many more interleaves to be observable. And here are three sets of additional orderings, since S0 can be ordered after L0 and S1 can be ordered after L1, and the combination of the two. Testing an outcome, is non-deterministic and might require testing tools to run iteratively for thousands or even millions of times before the desired testing outcomes are observed. And here is the purple architecture. Purple has three main stages, the conversion, the execution, and the counting. Purple takes a litmus test and an outcome of interest and converts them to their perpetual counterparts. The perpetual litmus test execute in a different way than the litmus test and therefore there is a need for a specialized harness. After executing, Purple performs counting to check what outcomes have actually occurred. With perpetual litmus test, counting the variety and frequency of outcomes is not trivial. In addition to the exhaustive algorithm for our counting outcomes, Purple provides fast counting using heuristics. Now, let's look at the execution of a litmus test. This is the store buffering litmus test with two threads, each thread performing a store and a load to different memory locations. To identify which interleaving occurred during the execution, a litmus test requires comparing register values from different threads at the end of each iteration. This is achieved using synchronization. Let's unroll the execution of uh, this litmus test. 
thermodynamic iterations. For every iteration, there is a need to insert a synchronization barrier in order to achieve this comparison. However, this is costly in terms of performance. More than 80% of the litmus test execution time gets spent in synchronization. Now, let's look at how perpetual litmus tests differ. Regular litmus tests have a single integer value that is written to each memory location. For perpetual litmus tests, we replace integer values with monotonic, non-colliding arithmetic sequences for each memory location. For example, threads 0 and 1 will have a sequence that will be incremented in every test iteration. In addition, we remove per iteration thread synchronization. Having monotonically increasing non-colliding sequences per memory location allows us to be able to uniquely identify every value in the perpetual litmus test. Also, the fact that there is causality between loads and stores allows us to trace every load operation and pinpoint the iteration where a certain value was written at and the thread that wrote it. Removing synchronization adds a complication. Threads can now run ahead or behind each other. Let's look at an example execution of a perpetual test. On the right, there is a test log for this SB perpetual litmus test, where we store the values of memory location Y and X in registers. So, thread 0 starts executing the first iteration first and stores the value of Y in the register. And then it executes the second iteration. And thread 0's third iteration completes at the same time that thread 1 completes its first iteration and stores the value of x in register 1. And finally, both threads complete and we obtain our log. Let's look at an example of causality. In the case that we know that register 0 is 1, we know that 1 originates from the right at the first iteration of thread 1. With barriers removed, perpetual litmus tests allow exploration of a larger space of threaded elements. If we look at the log after the execution of a perpetual test, we do not know the exact order of operations in the time axis since synchronization is removed. Therefore, we have to look at all the pair combinations of registers for the two threads. We define the instance of these thread interleavings in a perpetual litmus test at, as a test frame. The space of these test frames is proportional to the number of threads with loads. So let's look at the test log. Here we have a concrete example log with three iterations from the perpetual SP litmus test discussed previously. In this example, we have a total of nine frames. With regular litmus tests, at the end of each iteration, we compare the register values to identify if the outcome of the target has occurred. For, our, for example, with SB, we check if registers 0 and 1 are 0. We need to do something similar with perpetual tests. It's slightly more complicated. Because we have different interleavings and multiple values from the sequence that correspond to the same condition, we change the conditions from equalities into inequalities, which we explain in detail in the paper. We can see the set of inequalities that the converter generates for the perpetual store buffering litmus test. Using this set of conditions, we need to test in every test frame if the outcome of interest occurred. So let's start. We substitute the values of n and m in the conditions and check if both are true. In this case, they aren't, so we move on. We do that for all combinations of n and m. So the only case that the conditions are true is for n equals 2 and m equals 1, which is counted as a target outcome. As you can see, the counting stage is time consuming, so the question is, can we do something better? This exhaustive counting and analysis for perpetual test frames has a complexity polynomial to the number of reading threads. Why can we use a heuristic? The exhaustive can generate a sequence of consecutive outcomes corresponding to the same condition, because one thread might run ahead or behind the other, therefore allowing consecutive frames to satisfy the same condition. The heuristic, however, can find just the first instance of the chain. To create a heuristic, we substitute one inequality with an equality. Specifically, we substitute the inequality with the first instance that satisfies the inequality. For example, for register 0 of n smaller equals m, if we use equal m, then this is the substitution we perform. 
Now let's look at how this affects the counting phase. Our inequality now only depends on n, so we quickly perform the substitutions. The heuristic only checks one frame for n equals 0, which is not satisfied by the condition. The same thing for n equals 1. However, for n equals 2, it finds the same positive target outcome as the exhaustive counting algorithm. Now the question is whether purple succeeds in identifying a larger variety of outcomes more quickly. To find out, we generated the suite of 34 perpetual litmus tests and ran against on synchronization modes of litmus 7 using the default user mode as the baseline. To answer the question, we looked at different metrics including performance speed up and outcome variety. Basically, if purple is able to observe a larger subset of outcomes compared to litmus for a fixed number of, of iterations. We also created a metric that corresponds to the rate with which outcomes are detected over time. Here we present the results for the performance speed up of purple over litmus 7 uh, user mode as a, a baseline. We ran for 10,000 iterations. On the x-axis we have all litmus tests that are part of our litmus suite and the geomy. Each bar in the y-axis represents the relative speed up over the user mode baseline, which has the value 1. The axis is logarithmic. The different bars are for purple exhaustive and heuristic, and the four remaining litmus synchronization modes none, user friends, time base, and pthread. Higher is better here. As you can see, purple with the exhaustive counter does not perform very well, so we will focus on the heuristic for the rest of the evaluation. Purple, purple heuristic, offers close to 9x speedup over the default user mode for the perpetual suite and 1.47x overall. Litmus none does not have synchronization as well and it performs fairly well, and the other methods perform similar or worse than the baseline. Here in this figure, we compare purple's efficiency in terms of outcome variety against litmus. We zoom in on three different litmus tests, store buffering, load buffering, and POWR001, which you can see at the bottom of the slide. We run for 1,000 iterations. On the x-axis, we have a set of bars for each bit vector. The bit vectors correspond to the different outcomes, both allowed and forbidden, uh, for each uh, litmus test when appending the values of registers together. SB and LB have four different outcomes and the other litmus test has eight. The yellow X corresponds to LB outcome 1, 1 which is forbidden in XCD6 TSO. On the Y axis we have the reported frequency of each outcome and the axis is logarithmic. A tool observing a larger set of outcomes essentially when we see more bars of the same color in, the, in this plot, has better outcome variety. Purple and litmus 7 time base observe all allowed outcomes with high frequency. The circles here represent how many litmus 7 modes observe a given outcome. The target outcomes, which are 1-1 for SB and 1-1-1 for POWR001, are observed by the fewest number of modes. Here, we compare purple's efficiency in terms of outcome detection ratios. On the x-axis, we have the test iterations from 1,000 to 100 million iterations. On the y-axis, we have the detection rate improvement over the baseline user mode. For each tool, we take the relative outcome detection rate for each litmus test in the suite. When dividing by litmus 7 user mode outcome detection rate, and then we take the arithmetic mean across the suite for each test duration size. Higher is better. This figure is about the detection rate of a single outcome per test, which we call target outcome. Here, litmus 7 does not observe all outcomes at 1000 duration. For example, uh, litmus 7 non is zero for all tests at 1000 duration. Purple detects outcomes with an average 4 orders of magnitude higher rate than litmus 7 user mode and is strictly better than any of the other litmus 7 synchronization modes. To conclude, 
We presented a new methodology for testing consistency using a new litmus test variant called Perpetual Litmus Test. We presented Purple, a set of tools that uh, allow us to create a test suite and enable the execution and analysis of the new test variants. Purple offers higher outcome variety, higher speed up, which is up to 9x on average, and higher detection rate, which is on average four orders of magnitude higher than litmus 7. And with that, I will conclude my talk. Thank you very much for watching our video. And with that, I would like to invite you to join our live session.